The Archdiocese of Los Angeles has agreed to pay $880 million to victims of clergy sex abuse dating back decades. This record settlement covers more than 1,300 victims. Attorney Saul Wolf is on the legal team for the victims, and he joins us now this morning to talk about the case. Thanks so much for being here. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. How are you and your clients feeling? Well, uh, I think a sense of relief is one feeling. You know, this is this amount of settlement, this this is the largest settlement against a Catholic institution, a Catholic archdiocese in history. And I think for us and our clients, the amount of the settlement reflects and, and shows the harm that was done to them when they were vulnerable children and shows at least some accountability for the decades of neglect, the complicity, the cover-up of the archdiocese that allowed these serial predators to inflict this harm. So it is, in our in our client's mind, um, you know, some reflection of accountability. Um, they've suffered for decades um, in the aftermath of the abuse, and unfortunately, dozens of survivors have died, <clears throat> and many are aging. So. It was time. It was really time for the Archdiocese to do the right thing and step up. And I think they did that with this settlement. Yeah, and part of the settlement is, is that the church will disclose more documents. Um, so talk about how you talk about the cover up and these documents. Talk about how the church's own record keeping of the cover up played into this settlement in this case. Sure. So, you know, unfortunately, we've had a history of cases against the Catholic Archdiocese across the country, including the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. And what we've seen, again, unfortunately, is a cover-up in the form of moving a priest, transfer a priest when things go wrong. And when I say things go wrong, when there's abuse that happens, part of the settlement um, includes transparency, which is really important not only to us as counsel, but even more important to the survivors who've gone through this. So release of clergy personnel files will be part of the settlement which which reflect will hopefully reflect that transparency and will be some sort of um, some sort of closure for for our sur survivors to be able to kind of see what what exactly went down because that is that is a big big source of of frustration and harm to our clients th this cover up and and this conspiracy. Yeah, and the settlement does allow the archdiocese to avoid bankruptcy. So uh, can you talk a little bit about that aspect of the settlement? Sure. I mean, as I mentioned, I think this is the right thing to do for the archdiocese to <clears throat> to reach a settlement with the survivors to avoid a bankruptcy and everything that comes along with that. Um, we've seen bankruptcies of diocesan entities again across the country in the wake or in the face of these these claims, and reaching a settlement and putting their best foot forward by the archdiocese to avoid that bankruptcy and the inherent delays. Uh, the inherent frustration and um, the all the the harm that kind of goes along with those delays for our survivors. So this settlement in in lieu of bankruptcy, I think is the best way to go for for all parties involved. And quickly, I just want to get your message to other victims because you were able to reach this settlement uh, because the statute of limitations for alleged victims was revived in this three year period. Talk about what that means for people who might be watching this right now and think that they don't have a case anymore because too much time has gone by. Sure. I mean, we were fortunate and our survivors are fortunate enough to have Assembly Bill 218 passed that allowed for this window for them to bring claims. You know, I would encourage not only survivors to come forward. Um, whether or not they know if it's too late um, to have a voice, to be strong, to be brave, just as the survivors that we represent in these cases are. And, and by the same token, you know, I would I would encourage other religious institutions, um, including diocesan and entities within the Catholic Church to to step forward and take accountability for their own actions, similar to what the Archdiocese of Los Angeles have done here. Well, we really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me.